Hey there, YouTube buddies. Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show. I think I got a good one for you today. Uh, last week, Santo Benelli was here from Questy Humidifiers, and we talked for a long time about a lot of stuff. But one thing we didn't get too in depth in was how you can use controlling the environment in your room, your humidity, and your temperature to affect the uptake of nutrients, like this stuff right here. So I asked him specifically. Uh, how can you get more uh, good stuff up into your plant? And he answered that question in this video. I'm doing a lot of pointing. Is that weird? Uh, watch the video and I'll talk to you after. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> so we've had Santo here doing some videos with us uh, from Quest to Humidifiers. And we've been talking about the air movers, the humidifiers and stuff. But I, and I think we got into it a little bit. But um, a lot of us are using a lot of these... Uh, nutrients in our plants and how does the humidity in the room in the plant affect uptake of nutrients yeah sure. especially calcium yeah sure uh, so when we're talking about mobile versus immobile elements uh you know you know it's uh, essential that you have your humidity dialed in to keep your you know not too high or not too low uh -huh. you, you know you keep a uh, again a, Previously so about. nitrogen versus calcium as far as being a mobile or, a, or an immobile yeah, element, so what does got, that mean? You've got elements that can uh, translocate, right? You, so you've got your, your, your nitrogens that can, can, or mobile elements that can, uh, can translate from one, uh, from other, from so, uh, lower tissues to higher tissues and uh -huh. uh, back and forth where you have uh, calcium that, that can't do that. That okay. needs to be... Uh, you know, taken uh, up, taken in the transpiration stream and through the xylem. Physically moved up moved through it. Up, it can't. Yeah, it so can't. It can't ladder its way up. You know, it has it to can't actually physically... translocate from one spot to the okay. next. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. um, so you you need to keep your plants in a healthy transpiration zone in order for it to happen. Um, again, you know, from you know our previous you know yeah uh -huh. uh, uh, talks. You know, we we talked about how low and high humidities affect this, and then with higher humidities, you end up with these mineral deficiencies where your your stomata is you know at uh, you know at, at full open but not able to fully transpire, and it's trying uh, from the root zone. If you're you've got an overly saturated root zone to pull up moisture, but again, there isn't really much of a, a difference between. Uh, leaf saturation oh, okay. and the humidity, the relative humidity in the air, in order for this to happen, um, and so you 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 really end up with uh, more of these mineral deficiencies. You see, and the, uh, conversely, when you have those lower humidities, you're 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 facing um, uh, sort of a the stomatic closed situation uh -huh. and the gutation and the softer tissues, which leads to disease. So you you might have those mineral elements present in the tissues, but because you're not getting any of that transpiration occurring, the plant get, can't get rid of its moisture load, and thus you know a two can't pull up uh, nutrients as effectively or efficiently. So when it when it comes to your nutrients, uh -huh. uh, again, um, you know keeping your plants uh, within uh, you know, within healthy guidelines, and, and we do give some guidelines uh, uh, through um, our humidity report and uh, online. We have some informational. Uh, Is that on your website? Yeah, on our website at questhydro.com uh, about guidelines for propagation, vegetation, flowering, um, wow. even nighttime humidity. So, when you know you you stay within uh, the guidelines, and I typically, like I said previously, uh, fifty percent, fifty percent tends to be a good spot for. Uh, for for most growing because uh, it it prevents propagation of, of you know most molds and mildews uh -huh. and it keeps the plant in a healthy transpiration zone um, and so that your plant is able to you know uptake you know uptake its nutrients and maintain again. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say that, that, you know, I got a bunch of beneficial bugs. I had my room super clean before I started. I'm not having a pest problem. I don't feel like I'm going to have a pest problem. Can I push my plant harder by pushing my humidity up a little bit? Yeah, you can, um, you can push your plants. Uh, you can push. You can push your plants harder. Uh, but then I run into more disease, more pest pressure, more... It, it really depends. It's possible to run into more pest, uh, pest pressure, mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, depending on your, your humidity zone. Um, you know, you, you can push your plants to transpire more. Uh, mm -hmm. My recommendation is to, if you're going to push your plants to transpire more, if you're going to drop your humidity, uh -huh. uh, watch, watch your nutrient loads. Okay. Uh, your plants will be more prone to, to leaf burn. Okay. Uh, because you expect, you're having this expectation for them to, uh, you know, pull more nutrient 
uh, faster through the plant. So. so I'm going lower with my humidity. My air is drier. My soil is wetter. More is going through. Is that yeah, as simple more is, as it is? Yeah, more is going through the plant. Um, but there's to a point, there's a point where the sure. humidity gets too low, right? And the, the plant just can't, shuts the, down. The plant, yeah, the stomata close okay. up. But. And now there's other people that will say like, I, hot peppers is a, a good example. They feel that the, the conventional wisdom is that high humidity, high heat makes the peppers hotter. Okay. I, it, Who knows if that's true or not, but, but what do you run into when you try to do that? If you try to go up to like, you know, a, you know, 80 degrees and 60% or 65% or something up in those range, what are the things you run into there? It, it really all depends on the plant. Uh -huh. uh, so, I mean, I, I myself, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a hot pepper grower. Mm -hmm. I like to, uh, they, my experience as showing outdoors, I've grown hot peppers that, uh, you know, they, they like it hot. Uh, -huh. uh and, uh, you know, the, they like some like really temperate, like, uh, uh, mild humidity. So, you know, 50, 60 percent has treated me, has always treated me well uh, for growing hot peppers. Uh -huh. um, so I've never really had any any issue at, at those humidities, at those temperatures. Mm -hmm. If you were pushing the envelope, though, you don't know. It might be lower, it might be higher, it might be. Yeah, yeah. It could be. It could be lower. Uh, again, depending on. So you would vehicle. experiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you, know, def you know, definitely. So you'd have your range of what's, so you, you got a number that, that makes sense and then you go different sides of that with different humidity, different heats to, yeah, to see how I, they react and look for happy plants. Me or? as a gardener, as a, like I said, I enjoy gardening and me as a gardener, I, I, my range is uncomfortable between 45 and 65. That's what uh -huh. I, you know, uh, for mature plants, that's what uh, I'm comfortable with okay. all day long. If I can, if I can stick uh, at that 50% range, I'm happy. Um, you know, does this apply to everything? No, I mean, uh, with younger vegetative growth, of course, I, I like things at the higher end of spectrum. Sure. Um, but, uh, you know, when, when plants are flowering and fruiting, I like things to be a little drier. Okay. So, in veg, with a plant, uh, if you're trying to push more nutrients through it, would you bring your humidity down? Um, so, if you're trying to push more nutrients through it, if um, it's... Uh, For it's more vigorous question. growth. For... I mean, I guess um, if, you're, if you're pushing your plants hard, you're really feeding those plants mm -hmm. uh, and you have it, it really depends on the situation. So if you're driving your humidity lower, um, I wouldn't necessarily mean that that's going to be more vigorous growth. It all really depends on your plant. But if you're driving your, your humidity lower, uh, that is kind of you know, pushing more your, water through the plant, you're pushing more you're just, water. Yeah. But you're stressing it out. You're so if, if you, you know, to it, a point, to a point, you're pushing more water through the plant, uh -huh. right? Again, too low. You're not pushing any water through the plant. Sure, high, it you're stops pushing, entirely. It yeah. stops entirely. Okay, so it's hard to say, but it is something interesting to talk about and to think about and to experiment with. Yeah, but not in the 40s and the 90s. It's within a range around the the, the 50 kind of situation. Yeah, and like I said, we we offer that information uh -huh. uh, on the Quest Hydro okay. website. Uh, we have the humidity report. Um, we took a lot of the zones. Uh, we see fruiting and flowering. Um, we, we see a comfortable zone in that fruiting and flowering stage around between uh, 60 and 65. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, and then for night uh, nighttime fruiting and flowering, we see temperatures between 55 uh, or temperatures, uh, humidity is between uh, 55 and 60. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm comfortable recommending all day long in that uh, on that 50% range because it it's a... Uh, it, it, it's a multi, you know, it's a, a multifaceted. You're attacking mm -hmm. different angles just uh, as a preventative. You're still a solid transpiration rate, but you're yeah. uh, you're you're more inhospitable to the, the the bad guys. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're known to have that, um, vegetative obviously you can be higher than that. You can you can see uh, humidity is higher at, again depending on mm -hmm. what you're growing and your plants. Uh, you can sure. see humidity is as high as uh, 60, 70 uh, percent. Um, so. But uh, yeah, just again forewarning on the, on the lower humidity. So there's a point where you'd be pushing plants maybe a, a little too hard on uh -huh. transpiration. And also, so there's a point there. Can... There's gonna they'll be transpiring, transpiring excessively, and then there's a point where it'll just you know, shut, shut down. down. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a point where you can see real disease problems there too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but it's it all definitely has an impact. Your humidity. And your temperatures will have an impact on your nutrient uptake. Uh -huh. um, and you know, if you're pushing hard on that humidity, you know your plants are still tra they're, they're transpiring heavier. Uh -huh. uh, there's 
again, read your plants. Uh, a lot of us read our leaves, yeah. read, read our leaf tips, understand what's going on. Um, and uh, yeah, you might on those uh, in those lower humidities where the transpiration is starting to get heavier, uh -huh. uh, you might need to back off on your nutrient solutions okay. just a little bit to, you know, to prevent those burns. So I, I'd be thinking about burns and tips of my leaves and I'd be thinking about how much water it's actually drinking up. If I'm pouring water in there and it's, it's not drinking it up, I see that it's not, it's not yeah, happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, obviously root root masses come into play mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. and how much? Yeah, it's it's silly to to give a plant nutrient when you know when the the environmental factors aren't there. You mm -hmm. you can give a plant you know all the nutrient all day long and all the bennies. So the bennies can break down all the nutrients, right? Uh -huh. But if the plant can't uptake the nutrients, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, huge factor. Huge in factor. It, yeah. yeah. Very cool. I appreciate you going into a little more detail on that. Okay, so that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Uh, more show coming up in the next couple days where we'll get some uh, stuff sorted out, like uh, you and me talking about what we got going on, that kind of thing. Uh, so look forward to that. But for today, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow. For more information about anything on today's show, go to our website, ocgfam.com. And if you buy anything while you're there, use the code OCGFAM2018. It'll save you 20% and it'll be a lot of fun. The OCG Fam Show, it's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.